And you can bet that when, Mo, when Noah was eight days inside of that ark, they were selling t-shirts, I survived the flood. They were gathered around the ark and they were selling, uh, people were making money, selling food and selling trinkets and selling little models of the ark. And they were saying, Noah, how's the flood going inside of there? And for eight days he was inside of that ark. Those eight days are the days in which we live right now. We are in these eight days. And we do not know whether we are on the ninth day or the eighth day. Only God knows. But here is one of the mysteries of the salvation. Anyone who wanted to get on that ark, anyone who wanted to repent, anyone who wanted to be saved, they had until the ninth day before the flood. They had until the ninth day before the rain to repent. And there was a total of zero. Point zero. Noah got on the ark, along with those animals, which he saved, and they closed the door of the ark. God speaks of this kind of time in Israel many times. And he says, now is the time of the prophets. And here God speaks to Ezekiel. We read from the book of Ezekiel that's taken from the bravery of today and tomorrow. And the word of the Lord came to me, says God to Ezekiel. Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say to them, When I bring the sword upon the land, and of the people of the land take a man, one, and, and let the people of the land take a man, one of their meanest, make him a watchman over them. And he see the sword coming upon the land, and sound the trumpet, and tell the people that he that heareth the sound of the trumpet Whosoever he be, and doth not look unto himself, if the sword come and cut off, cut him off, his blood shall be upon his own head. And he heard the sound of the trumpet, and did not look to him. And he who heard the sound of the trumpet, and did not look unto himself, but the blood shall be upon him. And so he says there's going to be two men, there's going to be a prophet. He said, let the prophet be one of the meanest. Let him take one of the meanest of the men. Let him be a prophet. And then a couple of verses later, God says to Ezekiel, I have made thee the watchman. And I tell you, when you see the signs of the coming of the justice of God, you must tell the people, God's vengeance is upon you. And you must repent. And if you tell the people, if you speak to the wicked man, and he repents, it shall be well for you. And if you speak to the wicked man, and he repenteth not, it shall be upon his own head. But if the prophet does not warn the wicked man, and the wicked man dies in his iniquity, behold, I, the Lord, shall require the wicked man's death upon the head of the prophet, and I shall slay the prophet. That is why he said, take one of the meanest. He said, take the meanest. Well, Ezekiel must not have been that nice of a man. Take him from amongst you, the meanest, and put that meanest man up to be a watchman. And when he hears the trumpet, and when he sees the signs of the coming of God, let him speak. And if he speaks, and they do not listen, behold, he has saved his soul. If he does not speak, and they do not listen, Behold, they shall die in their sins, and I shall not only kill the wicked man in his sins, but I shall also require the sin of the prophet. This is why St. John Chrysostom tells us that the majority of priests go to hell. The majority of priests go to hell because they don't want to offend anyone. The majority of priests go to hell because they, they don't want to say two negative things, and especially at the most important time. We are in this time now. In a few couple of weeks, two weeks from now, I'll be in the Philippines. Yesterday, the wrath of God came over the Philippines. And a few weeks ago, the wrath of God came over the Philippines. Because of many sins. It is supposed to be the only Catholic country in Asia. They are all Catholics. Well, what is the situation? On December the 21st, 2012, after 13 to 16 years, 
of being in the government, uh, trying to make a bill, which is called, as you may not know, that in the Philippines it is well known, it's called the RH Bill. Reproductive Health Bill. Put forth by Mr. Aquino, President. The family that goes back in generations of wickedness. A family who during World War II was responsible for the murdering of many of their fellow Filipinos at the hands of the Japanese. They took advantage of the Japanese occupation to kill their own fellow men. The Americans seeing this said, if they're willing to kill their own people to serve the Japanese, then they will be good servants of America. And so they praised them and they elevated them. Now Mr. Benito Aquino III is the president and he has been pushing, as a condition of his presidency, this RH bill, which is that no Filipino can legally have more than two children in a Catholic country. The bill passed on December 21st, 2012. Now it is time for the anger of God. As uh, Father Ringrose pointed out many times, he says it is a grave sin, as one example, it is the most grave sin to practice birth control and to abort your babies. But it is a sin of human weakness. It is a sin of human maliciousness. The cause of many th problems that are found inside of man. But it is another sin. And it is, cannot be compared to the former. And it is infinitely worse and a great blasphemy against God to say that abortion is legal than to have an abortion. If you agree with abortion, you are a greater sinner before God than a woman that has had 13 abortions. Because you blaspheme God. And our country has said abortion is legal. And now we find that in the country of the Philippines, by popular vote, it is acceptable to the land of these Catholic people that they're being not allowed to have more than two children because the trouble with the Philippines, they say, is too much population. We had a, a, a governor, a, a mayor of, the, of, of Manila, the largest city in the Philippines, come and give our people a talk two years ago when I was in the Philippines. And the mayor stood up and said to the people, he says, you think the problem in the Philippines is too many babies? He said, no. The problem in the Philippines is too many sins. He's no longer the mayor. The problem in the Philippines is too many sins. The day of the sins is counted. Now maybe 10,000 have died. Perhaps some of our prisoners don't have a full report from our people yet. They are fine in Iloilo. As you go to the east, it is more, more deadly there. So we will visit them weeks. But what has happened? The judgment of God has come upon us. Now we read the Ezekiel tomorrow and he says, Behold, the sword has come out of the sheath. We read Ezekiel today and God says to Ezekiel, Tell the people the sword is being sharpened. Tell the people the sword is being prepared. And let them know that the sword of the wrath of God is about to come upon them. And they will not listen to you, O Ezekiel. Therefore, go into the midst of the people. And he told Ezekiel to go into the midst of the people. And he said, weep and mourn and groan. And Ezekiel went to the midst of the people and he wept and he mourned and he groaned. And the people will say to you, why are you weeping? We aren't weeping. Why are you groaning? We see no need to groan. And he said, because the judgment of God is coming upon you, O Israel, because you have turned away from God, and behold, God is angry, and he is sharpening his sword, and all shall know, and he shall kill from the south unto the north. St. Ambrose tells us, not only shall the north be slain, which is the north of materialism and sin, but also the south shall be slain, which is the south of the divine light and the divine justice, for the anger of God shall be so complete that it shall come down upon the just and the unjust alike. And God told Ezekiel, when my sword comes down, it shall come down upon the just and the unjust. Not only upon the north, but also the south. 
And as our Lord says in the Gospels of St. Ambrose, He said, If it be such in the green wood, what shall it be in the dry? And the green wood is the wood of the just, and the dry wood is the wood of the damned. The dry wood is gathered together in a bundle, and it is thrown into the fire, and it burns with a great fire. But when you see the suffering of the green wood, what shall it be in the dry?